You know, I'm starting to get the feels here with this. Now I'm starting to realize, just like, this is pretty damn depressing. What's up with you? Her grip on my arm tightened when she said that. It seemed that she was haunted by anxiety she couldn't grasp. She looked nervous. I put my arm around her shoulder. I think you're just tired. Let's rest up today. What are you saying? We help each other out, right? Anzu blushed and leaned her head against me. Uh, I realized that the old students on their way home were staring at us. I forgot that we were still in front of the school. Uh, let's hurry, Anzu. We rushed home, our faces red with embarrassment. And then even more redder when we ran into a lamppost. Now we have a bump on our head and we're like, ow. Hmm, there's that music. When I woke up, Anzu was sleeping by my side. The birds were chirping and that's what woke me up because they're noisy. It looked like I woke up earlier than Anzu. I looked out the window and saw a different scene from yesterday. It appeared that all the cherry trees wilted after the Appalachian cherry tree had died. I just heard the music skip a split second there. It's gone out of sync, hasn't it? Damn it. I hate when I have to edit shit like that. It felt very strange, then I turned my eyes to the bed again. Andrew's sleeping face was cute. The problem was she didn't let go of my arm. I was happy, but I couldn't get up because of it. Hey, Anzu. Anzu? Anzu responded with her eyes closed. I want to get up. Dame. Don't say, Dame, it's time to get up. <laughs> now she's sounding more like she did the day before. Like, before she started to act a bit different. Anzu put her face near mine without opening her eyes. Hm? I pretended that I didn't want to in order to hide my embarrassment, then I kissed her on the lips. Her lips were so soft I felt as if I might lose my mind. What little he has won. Anzu finally opened her eyes when our lips separated. Oh, <laughs> that's an actual line. <laughs> All right. I couldn't get up because you've been clinging on to me. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, it's so similar to the day before. It's like perfectly normal in the morning. But I bet I know what's gonna happen. He's gonna be like, uh, can you let go, please? The same way as he said, could you get off, please? That's when it triggered her spacey out and forgetful sides that just came out. It reminded me of the morning of the ski trip. At that time, she clung on to me too. Ski. There it goes. Anzu asked. Remember, we slept in the same bed that day. You clung on to me then too. Don't mention being clung to, Yoshiki. It triggers these things. I don't know why. We'll find out in due time, but still. Anzu looked perplexed. Hey. Anzu hugged me as if she suddenly felt nervous. It's alright, don't worry. 
私他にも何か忘れてるの Can you think of anything that you can't remember? What? Can you think of anything that you can't remember? What? Is it just me or does that make no sense? Can you remember something that you can't remember? Well, no, because I can't remember, you dumbass. Yeah, I know, but think harder and see if there's a memory that you couldn't remember previously, but you can suddenly remember. Okay, I kind of see what it put there, but that still makes little sense. Anza looked at my face and thought. Eventually, she shook her head. Anzu, she was right. Usually, people wouldn't be aware of what they'd forgotten. It'd be impossible to keep track of what they've forgotten. If people realized the fact they've forgotten something, they'd be petrified. Not really. It depends on what they actually forgot. <laughs> I held her shaking foam in my bed. My god. It's like Nanaka's route all over again. A special power. And once it goes away, it becomes. My god, I don't believe the similarities are uncanny. Except the abilities are totally different. How interesting. Don't be scared, I'll tell you what you might have forgotten later, alright? Yoshiki. It really does. Are you alright? Well, now we see that, uh. Yeah. These trees have got some importance, and I have no idea what the hell it is. And don't tell me, of course. We'll find out sooner or later. I calmed her down and managed to drag her out of the house, even though she said she didn't want to go to school. Anzu was looking at me worriedly. Let's get going, it'll be alright. You're just a bit tired, that's all. Everybody has a slump. Yeah, the Ikumura memorization method is your forte, right? <clears throat> Memorizing things is sort of like a skill for you, so it's possible that you went into a slump. I made that up to drive away her anxieties. But after I added my theory, it didn't sound too far fetched. <laughs> it is so, you just got your memories. Ah, uh, filing, ca filing cabinet messed up with the wrong labels. We'll return to normal anytime soon. You know, situations like that, I just like imagine like your mind is a giant library, loads of different shelves, drawers, and all that. You got people organizing things, just like, okay, okay, who's the idiot who mislabeled this? Oh come on, you immature! That that is not supposed to say peanuts on there. Who did this? Who's scribbling these? Was it you, Tommy? No, it wasn't me. You freaking sort this shit out now. It'll take a while. Get to it! Seriously, it's my imagination's pretty random. Like, take for example, the bladder. Imagine there's like miniature people there. And it's just like, when they're trying to hold, when you're trying to hold in, needing to take a, a piss and all that, it's just like they're trying to hold off like a giant gaze, like, Madeline, it's gonna blow, keep it shut, boys, get more, we need more reinforcement, get more people over here, quickly, it's gonna blow. <sighs> Anzu finally smiled. Focus on the plot, though, suddenly I heard a voice from behind. I turned around and Yume had just left her house. I could recognize her voice just by what, huh? That's... that's... that's random. I mean, you sure can't recognize anyone's voices on their own, can he? 
She sounded a bit sulky. Ohayou. Morning, uh, why are you upset? Whatever, are you alone today? Where's Otme? We just left the house too. That's something that I wanted to ask Otme though. Where did she go two nights ago? Did it have something to do with the dead everlasting cherry tree? Hmm, I think I've pretty much recovered. Thanks. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right, I'm fine now, but Anzu seems a bit... Since yesterday morning, she seems... Anzu interrupted me. Anzu started walking swiftly after she said that. Hey, Anzu, wait! You may and I fall her in a rush. No, that's not true. When we got to the school gate, my vision became distorted. Then a sudden wave of exhaustion attacked me. I staggered along. Yoshiki? I felt extremely dizzy again. Oh. What? No. I couldn't stand anymore. My vision was failing. It was certainly a different feeling from the sickness from the other day. A feeling? What the heck was going on with me? Besides sleepiness, a strong chill surrounded me. It felt as though the world was rejecting me. I was chilled to the bones. The next moment my vision went all black. I felt as if the world had turned itself upside down. I heard some noise in the distance. It sounded like Anzu and Yume's voices. The noise went on for a while, but with a harsh ringing in the ears, I couldn't hear anything. Then, eventually the ringing went away, and my consciousness fell into, fell into complete darkness. You had to ruin that line. Damn it. I opened my eyes in my own room. I was lying down. I must have lost consciousness and stayed sleeping since. I felt as if I had time traveled and teleported. I looked at the clock and it was four in the afternoon. Anzu was looking into my face from the bedside. Did she carry me here? Anzu. Uh, uh, yeah. How long have I been unconscious? Oh. Eh? I was so surprised that I bolted up. I felt dizzy because of my condition. Anzu just looked confused to see me that way. Was it possible that she... Um, I don't know.
Nancy, come on. I grabbed her shoulders with both my hands. <laughs> she looked startled. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's me, Yoshiki. <laughs> Nancy looked scared. Her voice was shaking, she held herself with both arms. I was surprised to hear the word God from her, but it didn't matter now. Anzu, don't worry, I'm right here. I'm here. I held her. Her body was shaking. Anzu started calming down probably because she felt safe in my arms. Yoshiki. Lax, can you tell me what happened? What happened to me? What day is it today? Today is 27th. 27th. Good, it hasn't been a day since I passed out. Then we got home. Her voice started shaking again. Her face suddenly turned back to normal even though she'd been so upset. Anzu. Anzu looked at me suspiciously. Honestly, it was heartbreaking to hear somebody you loved ask who you were. What condition was it? Was it... Uh, Alzheimer's? Or... Dementia? Or... Is it... I don't know. Like, the illnesses like that tend to affect pe some older people where they just, like, their memory just goes completely to the point where they don't even recognize family. Now that is true tragedy. How should I be at a time like this? I'm Sakurai Yoshiki. I'm your friend. I squeezed out my voice. Yoshiki? She tilted her head and suddenly looked surprised as if she remembered everything. It was abnormal. This wasn't like ordinary memory loss. Anzu was frightened because her memory was slipping away for unknown reasons. I wish that I could use proper magic at a time like this. But I couldn't do anything. Yoshiki. Anzu clung on to me. I don't want you to forget about me or Anzu. I held her tightly again. We kissed as if to make sure of each other's existence. There was a long silence. It was a long kiss. It was a very happy moment. But 
when our lips touched, we knew that this moment wouldn't last very long. After kissing, we stared at each other. I love you too, Anzer. I know. I nodded strongly. Anzer smiled as if she was satisfied to see me nod. Then, as we predicted, her smile disappeared into thin air three seconds later. Anzu looked around in confusion. It was extremely hard to see Anzu like that. But what she'd said to me gave me hope. I had to be strong now for Anzu's sake. Hey, oh, this is the residence of Yoshino Sakura, principal of Kasami Academy. Oh, please, you kindly brought something back that she left behind. Unfortunately, she's not in right now. Oh, that's okay. It happens all the time. I shouldn't confuse her. I concentrated my attention and faked a smile. Sure thing. Take care. Anzu politely bowed and left. I stood there and watched her walk off for a while. I hoped that she'd remember me, but she never turned around. I went back to my room and crashed on the bed. I didn't feel like doing anything. I wasn't even hungry. I just felt empty. Suddenly my phone rang. But I didn't want to answer, so I turned the power off. What was happening to me? What was happening to answer? My head spun in confusion. I couldn't think of any solutions, and even if I did, I didn't have energy to do anything. Anzu. I think we're going for a bad ending in this as well. God damn, the feels are going to freaking be off the charts. I woke up. I didn't even have any dreams. I wish that Anzu's dreams would have flowed into my mind, but nobody's dreams had. Oh, trust me, Yoshiki, if you saw her dreams, you'd probably feel even more depressed. But at least maybe then you could get some clues, understanding of the whole situation. I got up on my own. Nobody was by my side. I was right, there was no Anzu anymore, though she'd been here until two days ago. Although I'd been sleeping by myself before that. So Anzu had only been here for a few days. I felt enormous pain when I realized that she was the most important person to me. Would she come to school? I thought she would. It'd be hard to see her. I reluctantly started getting dressed for school and heaved a sigh. As I was thinking that I wanted to skip school, the doorbell rang. Coming! You may rush inside when I open the door. You may. What's up? So I thought I'd bring in some chill music so to kind of relax the moment, you know? Okay. How does one take better care of themselves if they don't know what the hell's the reason for it. Sorry. I didn't feel that the second time was due to my health condition. I didn't know the exact reason though. But it's obviously got something to do with those trees, Sakura's disappearance, and possibly that car crash is involved in it somehow as well. What? Shut it. 
I figure you can go now that you've checked up on me. So na koto itte. Koko de mate de agiru kara. Hayaku shitaku shite kite yo. Alright. Thanks to you, mate, it didn't look like I could skip school. It was annoying at first, but I remembered she was someone I could call family who would support me in a situation like this. Oh, it's nothing. Uh, thanks for picking me up. I smiled faintly. Thanks for waiting. She went home. I think she's busy with all of things. A fight, huh? It'd be a thousand times better if it was, but I didn't say it out loud. Well, it's something like that. How do you know that it was my fault? Because, duh, it's always the guy's fault. Yume's harsh words sounded soothing to me now. And that glare, that glare that I still have as my background on the laptop. I must have gone crazy. You may now walk down the street, no longer land with blooming cherry blossom trees. Now it actually looks like winter, which it is. It felt odd after all, but even that oddness didn't bother me now. Where's Otne, by the way? Drop by where? She's doing important off-screen plot-related things, you know. You may look sad. That was right, though she always acted strong, she actually hated being alone. Well, don't worry, Sakura-san will come home any day now, like last time. Those were just temporarily soothing words, but it actually helped to say that. Well, yeah. To drive my worries away, I imagine Sakura-san opening the door of our house and smiling. And that's just been- WHERE THE FUCK HAVE YOU BEEN?! Have you any idea how worried we were?! It's like, <laughs> sorry, sorry, I was doing plot. Very important things, and I couldn't tell you about it. Yumi stared at my face and giggled. Sorry that I made you worry. She emphasized the word family. Yeah. She waved at me and ran to the entranceway. I hesitated to go in the classroom because I was afraid to see Anzu. I faintly hoped that she'd remember me, but I was overwhelmed by nervousness. I couldn't just keep standing in the hallway, so it's kind of like the feeling of, say, going to a new school for the first time. It's like, oh, it's, I feel so nervous I'm gonna enter the classroom. No, I don't want to. I made up my mind and went in. I looked at Angie's desk, she didn't seem to be here yet. I felt deflated and sat at my desk. But Taro greeted me cheerfully. Hey. With no idea how to respond to his rambling, I just nodded. まだ来てないみたいね。何か安住に言うのの？いや、借りてたノートを返そうかと思ったんだけどさ。安住昨日休みだったろ？Oh, sorry, it was because of me. ちょっとして今日も休みってわけじゃないだろうな。I don't 
ないよ。Akane waved towards the classroom door. I turned around and there was Anzu coming in. Anzu. Again, how many times has it, have people's names been written like that? It's like Anzu, Tsunami, Akane, Ah,、uh, Coco, Yume. Just ow, that hurt. Just focus on the plot. Our eyes met the next moment. But she just bowed to me slightly when she saw me. Shoot, she didn't remember me. I hid my disappointment and pretended I was fine. Cora, oh, so is on there. It's more than a motto, high mini kitted on that. Come in, much like the Kunin's got the Kyo's to meet Chatta. Holy shit, how far back's the memory screwed now? Anzu laughed. Kunin, the Nina no Dokin, it's got the Kyo's to the Kodoka. ああ。Taro went back to his own seat. Anzu chan, do you have a good time? I'm not sure. 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 Phew. Fortunately, Nalara, Akane, and Oa Wataru realized that Anzu and I hadn't spoken to each other. It'd be hard for Anzu to be interrogated under conditions like that. It seemed that she'd completely forgotten about me. Anzu just looked normal and happy. Ah,、uh, I don't know if I'd use the word happy. Or even normal, because, wow, she's acting different from how she normally would. Anzu looked much livelier than when she was scared she might forget about me. Well, sure, she looks calmer, I suppose. But I thought of her peace of mind. Perhaps I should remain a stranger to her. That way she might not have to suffer. Wouldn't it be easier for me if she didn't recognize me at all rather than if she kept remembering and forgetting about me? Eventually I came to think like that. Could this be called a state of enlightenment? That's the way I felt. Ah.、Uh-huh. As I caught. Co- um. Permentalized my thoughts, I felt my existence becoming somehow lighter. I looked at my hand in a rush. <laughs> I felt as if I could see my desk through my hand. But it was only temporarily. I was just imagining it. Damn. I must have been exhausted. I heaved a sigh. <sighs> During lunch break, I didn't feel like eating in the classroom or going to the cafeteria, so I walked aimlessly towards the courtyard. At least I managed to get some yaka soba bread at the store. That was my only comfort. For some reason, I was able to get it easily while other guys were fighting over it. I just slipped the money on the table in order to avoid the long line at the cashier. Usually, I'd be smirking at my victory, but I didn't feel like it today. <laughs> And Mr. Kochi since they appeared at the right time. I had an idea. Wouldn't it be better to visit the nurse's office rather than the cold courtyard? Um, Mr. Kochi sensei,、uh, excuse me. <sighs> Would it be okay if I ate my lunch in the nurse's office? <sighs> There's no good reason, I just didn't feel like eating in my classroom. I chuckled to embellish my excuse. Ha <laughs> ha! Sensei? Oh! Ooh! Mr. Koshi sensei whispered and walked away. Well, she totally ignored me. Even though she didn't want me in her office, that attitude seemed too excessive. 
What? She imagined she heard something. How could she be a teacher like that? Hmm, when it rains, it pours. You're all right, I should just be thankful that I should, could get my uh, supper bread at least. Whatever, I'm going to eat in the courtyard. After school, I stormed out of the classroom. I didn't want to talk to anybody, not only to Anzu. Everybody must have thought I was odd. But nobody asked me what was going on. Maybe that was their way of being kind. Or maybe... They can't see you. <laughs> I saw Otne coming this way. She looked rushed. She was heading for my classroom. I looked down because I didn't want to show my face to her. As we passed each other, Otney stopped as if she suddenly noticed something and looked back. Then she stared at me. I remembered what she was like three days ago. She looked concerned, cornered, but I couldn't think of what to say to her now. Otney looked like she wanted to say something, but I walked away. Fool! I turned around after I passed the school gate. Suddenly, Anzu's smile came to mind. And there it is again. I felt so discouraged. But I shook my bad thoughts away. Then I told myself that it was alright this way and headed home.